Why housing is so expensive. All right, this is a big deal, a big deal. And there's no easy solution. Well, we, I do have a solution, but uh, it's not an easy solution. So everyone's griping about the cost of housing, rightly so. You know, I got four kids, man. None of them are ready to buy a house yet. But if uh, the way the housing prices are going, it's going to be tough to buy a house until they're probably, you know, well into their career. There's no other way around that. Or you can buy a house that, uh, you know, it's not as fancy schmancy as they would hope for. You know, I think we all had started with starter homes. We all did. You know, my first home was uh, 108000 bucks in Phoenix, Arizona. We bought, we, it was called Sweat Equity. We had to paint the house, the whole thing outside, uh, inside the whole thing. It freaking sucked. It took two or three weekends of doing that. All right. And then, uh, then we sold that house. Uh, we bought another house in Dayton, Virginia for 126 in 2002. That same house in Dayton, Virginia, I just saw sold for, I think, 340 or something like that. So we sold it for 126. We, uh, we bought it for 126 in 2002. All right. Hold on a second. All right, so we have 126 is our present value. I think went 346, uh, 2002. That's uh, 21 years later. All right, and uh, zero payment. So that increased by 4.9 percent a year over those 20 years. Oh, but we also put a pretty significant addition in there as well. So when we bought our house for 126 in 2002. We sold it for 240 or something like that in 2008 because we put a significant addition there. It went from three bed, one bath to four bed, two baths. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, but here's the real reason. Check this out. New privately owned housing units, total units, all right? Housing units this is from the FRED, the uh, St. Louis uh, Federal Reserve, all right? So we got the FRED, St. Louis Federal Reserve economic data. And you can see, in 1959, in mil in, uh, they did 1.6 million new privately owned housing units started. These are new starts. How many housing units are they building? In 1959, in February, they did 1.667 million in 1959. We go up here to 1973, they did 2.28 million. We go down here to 1984, they did 1.66 million. We go here to 2006 or so. I can't see because my face is in the way. They did 2.147 million. Where are we right now? 1.42 million. We haven't been this low since right there, 2007. All right, look at that. I mean, we haven't been this, this, but look at that. Look how low it's gone from right there to right there. I mean, look how low that is compared to historical. I wonder if we could do a trend line on here. I'm sure we could. But look at that. I mean, so, okay, so check. So, so basically, we're building roughly the same amount of new starts as we did in 1959. Now, check this out. These are all housing units to include multifamily building. Interesting. Interesting. In 19, September 1992, estimates of housing starts include units and structures being totally rebuilt on an existing foundation. So a teardown, if that makes sense. Hmm. All housing, these are all built that multi-family the whole thing check this out the population so right here the population was what 175 million people in the u.s of a and we had 1.657 million housing starts hmm. now the population is 335 million people in the u.s of a we got 1.39 million housing starts so the population has doubled over the, the 1959 till today. What's that, 60-something years, 65 years, something like that? And yet the housing starts are actually below what they were when the population was half as large as it is today. Check this out. Gosh, the more and more old people in the United States than they were in 1959, so that's not fair because old people already have their houses. Oh, okay. Let's look at working age population. Hmm. Here's working age population. Right here, started in 1977, age 15 to 64, working age population. So in, in uh, 1977, we had 130, 136 million people of working age population, and we had housing starts of 1.9 million. Hmm. Now we got here uh, 209 million people uh, working age population, and housing starts at 1.583 million. <laughs> We're not, it's just, how much can you, I mean, we're just not built, and look, so, 
so do you not see this? We were building more than, no, we're not building more than the population, but relative to the population, it's gone the exact opposite. There just isn't enough houses being built, not by any stretch of imagination. On top of that, I read something that 25% of the cost of a new home is the regulation. All right, so the cost before, and now we got to have, you know, like, what they're mandating solar panels in California, for instance, you know, mandating uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. Now, that might be better, and we can make an argument, but 25% is for the regulation. So, we have a, a gigantic, ginormous more population. We're building the same amount of houses as we did from 65 years ago, and we have much, much higher regulation. I just so people gripe about this and well, hey, let's focus on the the regulation that's keeping us from building. And by the way, these aren't single family homes. These are housing starts right here. Uh, start occurs when evacuation begins for the footings of a foundation of a building. All housing units and multifamily building are defined as being started when this evacuation begins. All housing units. This is just single family housing units right here. New privately owned housing units, single family units. So right here, we got uh, 1950, uh, whatever that is, 1959, 1.256 million. Fast forward all the way here, less than, <laughs> less than a million. All right, so now we do this, watch this. Let, I mean, we're, we're building less than we did the back then, but watch the population change. This is working age population, right there, 136 million in 1977 with 1.442 million of single family housing starts. Look, look at this gap. We got 983,000 single family home housing starts and yet we got a population of uh, 200, almost 9 million working age population. My friends, that's a fact. That's why housing is, what happens to basic economics? Demand increases, Supply stays the same. What happens to prices? They go up. Demand increases. Supply goes down. What happens to prices? It goes way up. Uh, demand decreases. Supply stays the same. What happens to prices? It goes down. Demand decreases. Supply goes up. What happens to prices? It goes way down. It's just basic economics, dudes. That's what's causing the housing chaos. Too much regulation. All right, the first and foremost, without question, regulations all over the place on this. Well, I think the, the good governor of Hawaii just magically said, eh, like three weeks before the Maui fires, we're going to get rid of all historical regulations so we can start rebuilding. We can start putting people in houses. So we're not going to have we're not going to have regulations for historical districts, which we used to have in Lahana, Lahana, whatever it's called. It was all historical district. And then three weeks later, just magically, the whole place goes on fire. And why do you think the governor of uh, Hawaii was in uh, in UUN talking about sustainable housing? Hmm. Just a few weeks before that. Interesting. That's not a conspiracy. It's not. Oh, Josh, you're crazy. We're going to get rid of all the regulations. So we don't have to follow the uh, historical district stuff. Well, honey, whatever it's called is historical district. And we're going to talk about sustainable development in the UN. Oh, and by the way, the sheriff is also the coroner in the uh in that in maui as well or whatever that town was lahani or whatever the sheriff is corner and that was illegal too yeah nothing weird about that yeah this is our government this these are our government they're really looking out for us we don't want them looking out for us we don't want the politicians looking out for minors we want the government just to let us be but they are looking out for them that's for sure they're looking out for themselves and this is one of the things you ask for regulation you're going to get it and the more freaking fires happen the more crap happens the more regulation is going to happen it's just the nature of the beast leviathan it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it's, it's just that's all there is to it how do you fix it i don't know man but there you go i still buy a house even how to take a mortgage and buying a home is your most assured way to to long-standing wealth without question all right love your thoughts don't forget to sign up for my email list down below we'll see you